Human design manifesting generators are very unique in their non-linear approach, the speed at which they operate, and their potential to skip steps. And these aspects of their design can often be misunderstood by others and can cause pain for the manifesting generator when they don't understand how this works. When they are living in alignment, manifesting generators can be super enthusiastic, their energy can be infectious and contagious to others and really exciting for others to be around. The opposite can be true when they're not living in alignment and they can actually be really draining and exhausting for others. In today's episode, we are covering emotional intelligence for human design manifesting generators. We're going to go over the emotional themes for manifesting generators that are based on their type specifically, how they emotionally impact others, emotional pitfalls to watch out for, solutions to those pitfalls, and best practices for manifesting generators that help them embody their own emotional intelligence potential. So if you are a manifesting generator or you love one, this episode is for you. Welcome to Heart-Centered Human Design, Emotional Intelligence and Conscious Business, the show for heart-centered entrepreneurs that want meaningful success and work-life balance so they can wake up every day feeling empowered, inspired, and supported by work and life. I'm your host, Vanessa Naja, human design specialist and coach, and I love helping you be on purpose and fulfill your potential in business and in life through human design. If you are brand new to human design, you may want to go back to season one, episode six, which is all about the manifesting generator type, just to get a deeper and foundational understanding of that. And you might also want to go back just to get a review. If you want to dive deeper into your own emotional intelligence potential, my program, Emotional Intelligence by Design, helps you do just that. And I'll give you more information at the end of the episode. Manifesting generators are approximately 33% of the population. So this does make them quite common, but every single one of them is still completely unique based on all the other aspects of their chart. Their purpose or their overarching purpose is to use their incredible life force energy to do work that they love, to love the work that they do, and to find the fastest way to get to where they are going which results in a very non-linear approach to what they're doing and can also involve skipping unnecessary steps because they are meant to find the shortcuts. While manifesting generators are first and foremost generator types, they also have a lot of qualities that are associated with the manifestor types. This makes them different enough from generators that I like to refer to them as a separate type, even though that is not how it's done in traditional human design. If you are a manifesting generator, I recommend listening to the last two episodes of season two, the one on emotional intelligence for manifestors and emotional intelligence for generators, just to get a better understanding of those two types, because you have many qualities of both, and yet you are completely unique. So like the generator types, manifesting generators have a defined sacral center. And the defined sacral is this consistent energy resource for them that is generative. It recreates itself as long as they are using this energy correctly in a way that lights them up and in a, in a way that they have responded to. Now they can use this energy in terms of work, in business, in hobbies, in any activities that really light them up and that will be generative for them. When they're using this incredible energy incorrectly, because they are forcing themselves to do things that they didn't respond to, that they don't like, that they think they should do because they've been conditioned to believe that they should act or use your energy in a specific way or work in a specific way. This energy is actually very degenerative. It can cause them to feel incredibly frustrated and other people really pick this up from them and they can be draining for others to be around when they're really living out of alignment in this way. If you are a manifesting generator and you're not feeling that energetic and you're not excited and lit up and enthusiastic about life, you really want to check in with how you are using your energy. So the electromagnetic frequency or the aura 
of a manifesting generator is open and enveloping like that of a generator. Now remember, aura is the way your, inner, your energy does interact with other people. Manifesting generators can attract and magnetize people, places, situations, and circumstances that they then get to respond to. And the strategy of the manifesting generator, like the generator type, is to respond, which lets them know if their energy is available or not for something. Manifesting generators do also have the aspects of the manifestor type, meaning as soon as they responded to something, they can immediately jump into action. They may also receive creative urges like manifestors, but unlike manifestors, they still have to wait for something to respond to relating to that creative urge before they jump into action. And once they are in action, they are going to go into this creative flow, which is very similar to manifestors. And that flow does not like to be interrupted. When they are interrupted in their flow, they can experience anger just like a manifestor can. And I am well aware of this because I am a manifesting generator and I get really angry when my flow is interrupted. Because manifesting generator, because their aura is like the generator aura and they do have all of this energy, workforce energy available, it can be really easy for people to ask them for things. Like all generator types, it is really important for manifesting generators to have clear and healthy boundaries or they can get taken advantage of, which leads to resentment and is very damaging to their relationships, including their work relationships. Learning to listen to and honor their sacred response and saying no when their response is a no is really important for them. Because being interrupted in their flow can really ignite anger, it can also be super beneficial for manifesting generators to include the manifestor strategy of informing, letting other people know what they're doing when they don't want to be interrupted so they can really get into their creative flow, do their thing in their own way without any interruptions. Mansions are super fast, so learning to slow down and actually feel their sacral response is something that they have to work on. They jump into action super quickly, and even having been in the experience for, experiment of human design for a while, it can still be hard to actually acknowledge if they've responded or not, especially if they have the 3420 channel in their design, because that channel is the fastest of all of them. I personally very much relate to this. I do have the 3420 channel and I still sometimes want to jump into action and I have to stop myself and say, wait, did you actually respond to something? And it often happens that I just don't know, in which case I sit and wait and see if I get something to respond to. You can even ask the universe for a sign. And then once I get that, then I'll jump into action. We are all conditioned to initiate which really only works for the manifestor types. Manifesting generators tend to initiate a lot because they're so fast. Even once they've learned about human design, they may just totally override their sacral response. And initiating without actually having gotten something to respond to that lights up your sacral energy can cause a lot of frustration. And the frustration is palpable to others and it can be really off-putting. Manifesting generators also have that anger of the manifestor type. So when you put that frustration and the anger together, this can be like a raging dumpster fire. And trust me, I know because I'm a manifesting generator and I have lots of experience with this. So waiting to respond before jumping into action, informing when necessary, and following your authority or you, your distinct decision-making strategy will eliminate a ton of resistance and anger. Manifesting generators have a non-linear approach to work in life. They like to skip steps. They are meant to find the fastest way to get from point A to point Z, and they might be skipping B and L and R or anything else along the way that is unnecessary. Sometimes they skip necessary steps and they have to go back and repeat them, and this can also lead to a little bit of frustration, but overall step skipping is part of how they operate. They also like to be very busy. They are the fastest of all the types. Often they like to multitask, 
They can pivot a lot, uh, especially in careers. It's not uncommon for manifesting generators to have moved from a variety of different careers over their life. And they may start a lot of things that they don't finish. And that's okay. They have a ton of interests. It's, it's very common for them to have a lot of different interests, to start different things, and then to pivot their energy and move on to something else. Because they have so much energy, it is important for them to use it all in ways that they like. And what they're doing doesn't necessarily need to turn into anything. They may be spinning multiple plates at the same time. And a few of those plates may actually be going in the right direction of, you know, their goals. And the others are just there for them to use their energy. So this is totally okay. However, we are so conditioned to not do things in this particular way, like multitasking, you're not supposed to multitask, pick, just pick one thing and stick to it and take it step by step in a very linear approach. And that is not correct for manifesting generators. And it can actually be really painful for them and have them questioning if there's something wrong with them. They may have been told to pick one thing and go that one step at a time to finish everything they start. And honestly, that can make them want to pull their hair out. I know because when somebody tells me to just pick one thing and stick to it, uh, not for me. So it is really vital that they are involved in the things that they're excited about, that light them up, because their enthusiasm is really infectious. It's motivating and it feels good to be around. So if you are a manifesting generator, all of these things are correct for you and they are totally okay. And other people are not always going to understand this. 67% of the population are not manifesting generators and they might look at you like you're a little crazy sometimes. And you know what? That is okay. Sharing with them what your own process is like through informing about your own experience and your type to your loved ones and to your colleagues can be really helpful here. So following your strategy and authority isn't necessarily going to be fun and easy all the time, and that's okay. There are going to be times where, as a manifesting generator, they may feel like they don't want to do something anymore and they want to pivot and start something else. It is important in this instance to still follow your strategy and your authority. Did you actually respond to something that let you know it is time to quit and move on to something else? Did your authority confirm that? Especially if you have emotional authority like I do, it's going to take some time to get clarity on that. So not all things that you entered into with strategy and authority will feel good and fun all the time. And that is all part of the process. If you are not a manifesting generator, it's very likely that you have them in your life. You might live with one. You might be in a relationship with one. You may have manifesting generator children or colleagues. And it's important to understand how different they are. When you are working with a manifesting generator, it is really helpful to ask them yes or no questions because that is what activates their sacral response. And remember, these questions need to be able to be answered with a yes or a no, an aha uh -huh or an ah uh -uh, a yup or a nope. Either or questions do not qualify because they have two answers and neither one of them are yes or a no. When manifesting generators have too many choices, they can feel really overwhelmed and they may be tempted to choose everything and want it all, or they may not choose anything at all. So presenting things one at a time is really the best approach with manifesting generators, just like it is with generators. With their defined sacral center and having a motor center connected to the throat, a center which drives energy, they really are the fastest of all of the types. Not only are they fast, like the manifestors, but they are consistently fast with that sacral energy that they have consistent access to. So don't try to keep up with them and really allow them to go at their own speed. It's helpful to remind them from time to time to make sure that they're actually listening for something to respond to before they jump into action. But asking them to slow down when they're in their flow is not going to be appreciated and will likely not go well. Mangens love to work. They love to be busy. So it is really important to let them do that. They need to use their energy up every day. And depending on how they're configured, they may have different energy levels. So not all of them are the super duper energizer bunnies that we make them out to be. 
but some of them are, and especially if they have an unconscious channel or unconscious strength, meaning it is colored in red going off of their sacral center, they are going to really need to use that energy and ideally in a physical way. So always respect them and their energy and let them use their energy in a way that is correct for them. So again, getting regular exercise, especially with unconscious sacral definition is super important for them. And if they're not sleeping well, getting more exercise might just be the solution that they need. If you're not a generator or a manifesting generator yourself, you may not always be able to keep up with them and that is totally okay. It is really important for you to honor your own energy levels as well as honoring theirs. If you want to dive deeper into your own emotional intelligence potential, because there's so much more to it than just your type, this is just the overarching theme, I invite you to check out my program, Emotional Intelligence by Design, where we dive deeper into your own emotional intelligence potential according to your chart and how you can use that to make the most of your career, your business, your relationships, and your life. You'll get personalized guidance from me and we'll unravel what has been keeping you from stepping into the highest expression of your emotional intelligence so that you can be on purpose, fulfill your potential, and create a life and business that you love. You can check out vanessanaja.com forward slash emotional intelligence and I'll also post the link in the show notes. I would love to hear how this episode landed for you. Did you learn anything new about yourself if you're a manifesting generator or your manjan loved ones? You can reach me at HD Vanessa Naja on Instagram. I would love to hear from you and I'll see you in the next episode.